The subject this morning is how to be in tune with Christ. First, we must know what Christ is. We have God the Father, the one sole substance in the universe which has created all things and from which consciousness all things have come. God the Father, cosmic consciousness, the absolute beyond his creation. Now he created this dream of life, just like you create a dream yourself. Now your consciousness in that dream, which activates the dream and gives it life, corresponds to the Christ consciousness in all creation. Now that's the first thing to realize. God the Father, in his creation, as the holy vibration, the Holy Ghost, the light which he created, that consciousness is Christ's consciousness. Now that is what we must merge in, and that is what we are trying to be in tune with. Remember, as Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Therefore, the consciousness in all creation, including your body, my body, trees, all things, that's God the Father. In the creation, it is Christ's consciousness. And the creation or the holy vibration is the medium through which Christ's consciousness expresses itself. Now, because God is in us, the Christ consciousness is in us, we can go back to him. If it were not so, we never could once more return home to God. But the trouble is, and this is the important point, the trouble is the Christ consciousness in us has been attached to the dream. It is still Christ consciousness. Outward consciousness is Christ consciousness, without question of a doubt, because God is the soul doer. Now, this outward consciousness is Christ consciousness attached to the dream. Now, that's the important thing to remember. That's the key point. Now, when we break that attachment, when we break that delusion, there is the Christ consciousness unattached. Now, that Christ consciousness is attached through the different centers of the spine, and we have to unlock those things so that we are free to merge in Christ consciousness. Now, Christ consciousness has many, many, many aspects. Everything is in it. Everything you can think of, all creation came from it. Jesus manifested that great aspect of it, love and compassion. But remember, the Christ consciousness is this consciousness that is talking to you, and it is the consciousness that is listening. What's the trouble? It's circumscribed, limited to this little body because of attachment. Because of being one with the dream, just like when you dreamed a dream, and many of you have, and you are one with it, you suffer in the dream, you have nightmares, it's real. Why? Because your own consciousness was attached to the dream. So, God's consciousness, God the Father, absolute consciousness beyond the dream, is attached to his creation. That is the Christ consciousness. It is further attached to the outward form which we see as your body and my body, so much so that in many cases of criminals and such people, it hardly resembles Christ consciousness. Still it is. The worst criminal is still Christ consciousness. But it is surely attached to sensation and the outward form of things of this world. So that's the important thing to remember, is that Christ consciousness in you is God the Father, only it is identified with his creation. That's why it seems so different. Why do we meditate day in, day out? To break that attachment, that's all. And when you completely break it, when you completely leave outward consciousness, objective consciousness behind, there is the Christ consciousness. Those who meditated many hours on the 23rd found after a while the mind just had to give up and keep still. Then you saw the light of Christ. In various degrees, but that's the same Christ consciousness. So remember, you are not going to get something, search something out. All you're going to do is prevent your own little ego from keeping you from realizing what you really are, the Christ consciousness within. So to be in tune with Christ, we must first know what Christ is. And remember, Christ is God the Father in you, in me, in all things. 
only it has become has become attached to the vehicle and we have to break that attachment now going on just a bit our goal in life is what our goal in life is to lift to lift this son of man which christ consciousness has become when attached to the body it's still christ consciousness but attached to the body it is known as son of man now our goal in life is what to lift that son of man so that it becomes the son of god or christ consciousness to lift it to break the attachment to the body to expand it from the circumscribed little body with its limitations to the un unlimited presence of Christ throughout all creation. That's the goal of life. That's what we must do. And if we do that, if we do that, if we lift the Son of Man up, then what happens? Then we can express the divinity with us, within us. Then we can be a true instrument of God. As it says in Ezekiel, he took me by the way of the east gate. In other words, the presence of Christ consciousness in in that prophet, lifted him up so he perceived the east gate at this point. He took me by the way of the east gate, and what happened? The glory of God shone all around. And I heard the sound of many waters. In other words, he perceived Christ's consciousness, unobstructed by outward consciousness. So that's what we are trying to do, is to express the divinity within us, and I'm sure each and every one of us wants to do that. We want to do that. There's nothing greater than being an instrument through which God can manifest without obstruction. The obstruction is in outward consciousness. When we do away with that ob obstruction, do away with outward objective consciousness, there God is. And you will remember in reading about the different saints, the lives of saints, it is, has been shown that when they're objective consciousness was blunted, like in St. Teresa, then the subjective consciousness or Christ consciousness was there. But I'm of the opinion and I, I'm in favor of doing this without sickness and so forth, if possible, without having the body smashed and broken and beaten. Why not do it in a conscious way? God has sent the channel of the beloved master whereby we can consciously blunt the outward objective consciousness, there we can perceive Christ consciousness. Many perceived it on the 23rd. Here in this church you had your meditation. There was the light of Christ. Why? Because we relegated objective consciousness where it belonged, away from what we really are, the Christ consciousness. So if we lift up this Son of Man, if the Son of Man be lifted up, then we will know that we are not son of men, but sons of God. That it is the Christ consciousness unattached which is the reality. And we read in, in the Bible, St. John, the third chapter, the 14th verse. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. As Moses did what? as Moses aroused the spiritual consciousness at the base of the brain, the kundalini power, as he lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, in the darkness within, when we first looked, there is nothing but darkness. But if we go through and penetrate the darkness, then we can arouse the sleeping presence of Christ at the base of the spine in static form. We can arouse it. It will come up and sharpen all your faculties that you may be able to be a son of God. It will unlock your consciousness from attachment to the bodies in the six centers of the spine. Although those centers are the seat of Christ's consciousness in you, there, there is an attachment there. We have to break that attachment. We have to unlock the seal. Who is worthy to unlock the seal? When the Son of Man has become the Son of God, that's all. If I be lifted up, I will draw all things unto me. If you lift up within yourselves the consciousness as a son of man, then you will perceive the Christ consciousness. You are a true son of God. All things will be added unto you as Jesus has said. And I'm sure that is what each and every one of us wants to do, wants to, the goal of each and every one of us, 
is to be that. A son of God, not just a son of man. Now going on, what is the Christ within us? I think that this question perhaps bothers some of us. We wonder what the Christ consciousness within us is. I have explained it somewhat. It is the presence of God in us as his own consciousness. But the holy vibration, the Om vibration, the Holy Ghost is the presence of Christ within us. In St. John it says in the beginning, was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The Word is what? The holy vibration, that's all. And in that holy vibration, as I have said a minute ago, is God's consciousness. Then it is known as Christ consciousness, still it is God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. So Christ in us is God the Father. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. So remember, God is seated, seated in the hearts of each and every one of us. In us, he is called Christ. Christ, Jesus the Christ. In Hindu scriptures, Jadava the Krishna, King Jadava who expressed Christ consciousness. It might be any and all of us who express Christ consciousness. That's what Christ is within us. And in the Gita we read, in the 18th discourse, 32nd line, 18th discourse, 32nd line, as follows. As the omnipresent ether is not affected by reason of its subtlety, so seated everywhere in the body, the self is not affected. God is in us as the self. As the one sun illumineth the whole earth, so the Lord of the field illumineth the whole field. They who by eyes of wisdom perceive this difference, that is, can you perceive that it is Christ who is in you as your ego even? You can when you realize the unity of consciousness above the ego. They who perceive by the eyes of wisdom, the difference between the field and the knower of the field and the liberation from attachment to matter, they go to the supreme. The supreme God is in us when we break the attachment, when the Son of Man is lifted up. One consciousness pervades all things. Now comes the question, how? How? How to be in tune with Christ? How to do it? The ever-present how? Well, sad but true, 25% is all we have to do with it. 25% is all we can do about it. 25% comes from the guru, intercession of the guru, 50% from the grace of God. That's the important thing. Now the guru is always ready. He's ready there. He's waiting to help you. But he cannot help you until you have done your 25% 100%. And that 25% is important. That's your spiritual discipline. Remember, the guru is there. He was sent by God to lead you back home. Just as Sri uh, master's uh, master, Sri Yukteswarji said, God sent me to take you back home. Isn't that wonderful? Now, God sent the guru to take each and every one of you and me back home to God. Well, what's the trouble? We haven't done our part. He's willing, but we're not ready. We haven't done that 25% in a thorough 100% way. When we do that, then he will gladly take us back home. Also, the 50% which comes from God. 50% effort Result comes from the grace of God. God is there. As I said a few minutes ago, Christ consciousness is there. The light of Christ is all around us. What's the trouble? We have lifted up the Son of Man until he becomes the Son of God. God is willing. God is waiting. But his grace will come only when spiritual law is fulfilled 100%. And that's what we have to do. We can't do the whole of it. But our little 25% has to be done thoroughly, 
And that's why we meditate. Those who are wise regularly, morning and night, and give some days to long, long meditation, that we may be ready when God comes. Now, some people think, well, God may be ready and willing to help some, but he just doesn't seem to think of me. We all feel that way, that God has forsaken us in the song which was sung, Love, Sorrows. We feel God has, doesn't think anything about us, but he is ready, he is waiting. For we read in the Gita most beautifully, the same am I to all beings. Nobody has a corner on God, thank God. God is not partial, God is not mocked. The same am I to all beings. There is none hateful to me, nor dear. Even the most sinful who worship me with undivided heart, he too must be accounted righteous because he is Christ's consciousness, even though he is the worst sinner. For he hath rightly resolved. Speedily he becometh dutiful and goeth to eternal peace. Know for certain that my devotee perishes not. No sincere devotee of God who really wants Christ's consciousness and keeps at it will ever be forgotten by God. Such is God. And so we must remember that, that God is not partial. God is not mocked. If you don't do your 25%, you cannot fool him. But if you do do it, you have nothing to worry about. In good time, he will come, and you will know Christ's consciousness. And so, in conclusion, to be in tune with Christ means that the duality of our consciousness must melt in the unity of God's great love and presence. And only by so doing can we understand this dream of life. Only when you see the one unity of God's consciousness is great light, then you can understand the duality. Then you can understand the dream. And we cannot understand the dream truly until that realization comes. When you see the one light of Christ, then you know that there is our common Father. Each one is a ray of that light, each one is our brother or our sister. Now you can talk about that in theory, but when you see the light of Christ, you know it, you have realized it. And finally, remember this, and then I'm through, that to be in tune with Christ means that we must expand our consciousness from the little limited body with all its troubles and aches and pains and likes and dislikes and this and that and other things to the great light of God, which is above all those things. As the Master said, ecstasy is simply an expansion of consciousness from the narrow, little, circumscribed ego, bodily consciousness to the great all-pervading love of the one Christ consciousness. Now remember one thing, if you forget all else, remember that the Christ consciousness is in you. And it is that same consciousness which expresses itself even in outward consciousness, even in worldly consciousness. It is still Christ consciousness, but you cannot enjoy it. You cannot appreciate it. You cannot thoroughly merge in it until you have lifted and transmuted that outward consciousness into the one great light of Christ. There, there you will find all that you need in the unity of God's presence. For he, as the Master often said, is not only my father, but he is your father, our common father. Let us meditate just a moment. Heavenly Father, Father, may we all realize realize at this Christmas time time, that friendship with Thee, thee, oneness with Thee, thee, 
grace is the greatest gift that we can receive. And we do, O oh Father, open our hearts to receive thy all-pervading love with one motive to give to others that they too may realize their oneness with thee. Bless each one of us. And above all, O Father, keep us steadfast that we may remove every vestige of delusion which makes us believe that we are separated from thee. For we are not. We are thy children. One with thee. Om peace. Amen. Now let us rise and sing the closing song, a song which the Master loves so much and which he used to sing a great deal at Christmas time. Sing it, feeling the great love of God in your heart. sanctuary of my devotion, and may I be able, by thy grace, to awaken thy love in all hearts. Make my soul thy temple. Make my heart thy altar. Make my love thy home. Always be with me, O Father. Be thou the only king, reigning on the throne of all my desires. I bow to thee, O Father. I bow to Jesus, to thee, Christ. I bow to the great ones, and with my love and devotion, on the altar of my heart, I bow to the beloved Master, the channel thou hast sent to lift me from darkness into light. Oh, peace. Amen. God bless you.